Hello and welcome to our garden tour. We are back in the cottage garden and we are in the front of our new borders, which used to be our driveway. But I just wanted to start here just to show you how much this has grown just in one season. So we really started planting this back in May, I think. And it used to just be a really rough gravel driveway. And look how much beautiful life there is here now. I'm absolutely loving it. So I just wanted to share some things here. We are in September now, so the gardening year is slowly drawing to a close. Maybe not so slowly, maybe a little faster than I would like. <laughs> the leaves are starting to change and yeah, say la vie. We'll have to say goodbye to our friends for a little bit. Yeah, I just wanted to sort of walk you through some of this. So here we have our beautiful roses and they are looking gorgeous. This is the um, Mary Rose. It's doing so well. I think it's d at least doubled in size and has been a repeat bloomer, which has been wonderful this year. That really soft pink that I absolutely love. Here, this cane here is from a Zephyrin Druin Rose. This is actually a thornless rose. It does have a few little thorns on the back of the little leaflets, but it's a looks more vibrant pink and I want to train this up an arbor that we're going to be building using um, we're going to be painting it the same color as the window boxes so it's like called cottage white I think or something like that and just sort of train this up there but this started so small and now I mean that is <laughs> taller than me I mean it's probably six and a half feet now so really loving that and has really pretty red kind of burgundy new growth, which I love. Our sedums in the border are looking fantastic. I think sedum or stone crop has a new name now, but I'm not sure what that is. I'm just going to keep calling it sedum. It's this one here. Again, we planted this this year and it looks incredible. Look at these. I mean, enormous and I love the blue green foliage on sedums they are just so beautiful some of our plans for the garden have not gone as well as we would have liked for example I had this beautiful idea of doing cabbages red cabbages lining this border and unfortunately they did nothing they're almost the same size as when we planted them I don't know if you can see that but I think it's the lack of sun this year. We've had so, so, so much rain and we just haven't had a whole lot of sun and they've just done nothing. And they're weird is going on with these guys. That was, that was kind of a bust. The other fail was the super tunias that we had lining the walkway as well. So all of our kind of border hedgy sort of plants for this year have been a fail. But those, because of all the rain, the slugs just decimated them. It was such a bummer. Like here, I've, I've left a few in. I've taken most of them out. Let me just show you this here. Look, I mean, I'll pull it out for you. Look at that. It's just a skeleton of what it was. And this was so gorgeous. So that's been a real shame. No matter how many slugs I pulled off of these, they still, they, they got them. That's all right, you know, say la vie. These um, Dusty Millers actually did really, really well. Really soft white. So I think that looks really sparkly in the border. The best annual that we have, I think, is the Play in the Blue Salvia. For me, that's probably my favorite. Look at this one. It's enormous, three feet wide. So from here all the way out to here, kind of getting in the way of the rose even here. But this color blue, oh my gosh, it's so stunning. And the pollinators are just crazy for this plant and it just blooms and blooms and blooms it blooms its head off huge gorgeous blooms mm -mm -mm. i love it i love it i love it i love it so nice so we have you know our daisies the status the status actually didn't do as well as i was hoping i was really hoping to collect tons of that to dry in the kitchen um, we have a little area where we dry herbs and 
uh, peppers for making spices and, and different flowers and stuff. But unfortunately, the status just didn't really bloom as much, probably due to the lack of sun. A lot of the vegetables in this garden have done surprisingly well. Our purple kale has done really, really well. And I come out and pick this every single day, which my dream of, you know, harvesting amongst the flowers has really come to fruition. Harvesting lunches out here has been, is, you know, it's been a daily thing and I've really, really loved it. Our flocks that we transplanted earlier in the year, getting free plants, you know, They've done really well and they're these beautiful ones. You know, we transplanted them, they were here on the property and we didn't know what to expect, but they've been blooming, repeat blooming, which is wonderful. And look at that, isn't that a really pretty phlox? Unfortunately, some of these, the, the phlox here are really susceptible to um, rust and powdery mildew. There's all kinds of fungal things going on. And I think that's this year, especially because of the rain, but yeah, these are definitely worth it. And I think I'll try and figure out a way to combat that. But it's not a really pretty flower. I love how the center of it is this darker pink. And then the outside is a lighter pink. It just, I don't know, it's really nice. Yeah, it's a really nice one. And so I think I'm definitely going to repeat this same planting scheme with the salvias next year just going all throughout the border with the salvias as you can see here we have a few other sedum that didn't do as well um, the echinacea have bloomed and then i'd have to i've had to cut them back and then they've bloomed again we've spread a ton of cosmos that i planted from seed throughout the border so i'll try and climb back here through the roses <laughs> so these are here I got snagged. I thought I might. There we go. So these here are just about to bloom. I hope they can make it before the frost. It's like a race against time. But they've gotten huge. So I think that's the thing this year is like the cosmos and the zinnias have gotten huge. Look how big this phlox is, you know. But, uh, but yeah, the flowers haven't been as big. So lots of green growth, not as many flowers. Just something to note something interesting i want to show you this alnick rose that i showed you earlier in the year i was really hoping that it would be in flower again because it's flushed in and out of bloom uh, by the time we did this tour but it's not but look at how many buds are on this and this has been in bloom i mean it goes in these cycles but so much of the year of the gardening year this has been in bloom and that's so nice look at this one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, tons more blooms. So it still has faith that there's more time. I believe in you. <laughs> in the back of the border here, we have a bunch of ami of this wild carrot. And this is such a good time to just kind of go through and collect the seeds from these. I love doing this and then just sort of sprinkling them throughout because I really want to have tons of seeds free seeds free plants free flowers and i really want to have a beautiful border of this ami next year this like white whimsical umbellifer that the pollinators absolutely love while i'm here i'll show you some of the stuff we've been doing on the hillside so we've planted these kind of blue green arborvitae balls here i think those are so sweet and i think that kind of repeat is really effective on the hillside we've also planted let me see if i can kind of get up here a little bit this um, was a gift from a friend and it has a really nice structure to it it wasn't doing very well on her balcony so she she gave it to us to kind of so we could give it a new lease of life a new home we have a uh, juniper here a blue juniper a couple of heathers there that do stay evergreen here. And we have this golden cedar back there and a beautiful pine. Can you see that? It's another sea green one and it is so gorgeous. Looks like a little miniature tree. It's really, really cute. But yeah, we've just been slowly trying to you know, to put some evergreen interest on this hillside for winter. And this is a great time to do that. 
I don't know if you noticed, but we actually did end up transplanting the butterfly bushes onto the hill. So that was our plan. And we have new things that are more structured for either side of the, the front door, which I've been loving and I'm really excited about. And you know, at first we didn't plant, transplant them at the ideal time, but we were able to get some plants for the door. So we just kind of had to do it. And look, look how resilient plants are. These are looking just fine, just swell. Uh, so yeah, they're, and the, they bloomed purple and beautiful this year, which I'm really grateful for. Here we have our sun gold cherry tomatoes and you guys, oh my gosh, here, these are so good. They're like candy. I'm so grateful that we planted these in the tripods. We were just going to do sweet peas and the sweet peas again this year were a bit of a bust. Last year, we didn't get any blooms at all. They barely grew. This year, they were just such a trap crop for the aphids. We thought it would be the Nicotiana, the ornamental tobacco, but really the sweet peas were just covered in aphids basically the whole year. It meant that nothing else was. I mean, they, they didn't even mess with our tomatoes at all, but that's okay. So I'm really grateful that we, were, we decided to plant these tomatoes here at the beginning of the year because it's just been so nice to be able to come out here, get a little purple kale, get some tomatoes and just make a little salad. They taste like candy. They, they're, in, they're so sweet. If you're trying to decide what kind of tomato seeds to get, I cannot recommend these highly enough. I mean, they're, it's loaded. I could keep picking, but I won't bore you with that. <laughs> so this is our Thomas Edison Dahlia. And it is one of my favorites. I just came through and deadheaded because we got a lot of rain. And so some of the stems broke back, but Look how beautiful those are. It is just such an amazing plant. And I am going to do the method that I talked about in an earlier video where you take a shallow, you can do some kind of tray or something like that, shallow dish, and just put a little bit of, I used um, coconut fiber um, coir. So I used that in the bottom and then I just placed the tubers in there, kept them moist and then they started to sprout. Then I planted them on in recycled plant pots in some soil with a little bit of fertilizer and then I planted them in the ground and they have just been loving it and they're so gorgeous. I love on these Thomas Edison's the dark stem. I think is just absolutely stunning. I've already started planning for next year. So I've planted some foxgloves all throughout the back of the border here. I'm really hoping for this beautiful drift of foxgloves next year, sort of like we had this year. I'll show you this Thomas Edison because look at that. It's like, I just want to like, <laughs> so sweet. Dahlias are edible. You can eat the leaves. You can eat the tubers. I'm um, the leaves, the petals and the tubers. But yeah, I just think that's, I think it's so pretty. <laughs> right in front of that, we have a zucchini. And we've had a lot of zucchini off of this one. Oh, here. Let me actually show you. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Look at that one. Look at her. So I'm going to have to get my basket and come out here and get the rest of these tomatoes. And there's another zucchini on there and probably more on the other plants. But yeah, this is, I mean, we've had so many zucchini this year and I know that we've had a lot of issues with our zucchini. Our, starting in about August, I think, the zucchini started getting, a, looking a little bit rough and it had squash or cucumber beetle really bad and some squash bugs and then it started getting really bad powdery mildew so i was like oh no what a bummer we've had such great crop this year and it's all going to go away but it didn't it kept producing especially this variety which is the dunja or dunya i don't know how to pronounce it it's d-u-n-j-a such a good variety here we have some more cosmos 
And again, it's like a broken record with these things, but this has been suffering from powdery mildew, again, because of all the rain. But this is called Sensation Piketty. I planted this from seed and it's, I love this one. I might show you a better example of that, but it's like this really soft white and it has a pink kind of, it's like kissed with pink. It's so gorgeous. Here, maybe that one's a good one. It's a really pretty flower. These ones are really small. But while you're there, let me show you. This is the ornamental tobacco. It's a really sticky plant, but it's really pretty. <laughs> kind of tubular flowers. This Thomas Edison is enormous. It's one of our biggest ones and it's so many buds. Look at that. It's tons and tons of buds. We just planted these columnar boxwoods these little spires and they're i think they're about three feet tall or four feet tall excuse me we're just trying to add some of that beautiful winter interest and i'm really excited about it our delphinium got eaten sadly <laughs> i had to put the produce away but this kale this purple kale is so great it's starting to flop over because it was so heavy but I've been eating off of this one probably the most. And so it's more of like a kale tree, <laughs> but it's beautiful. The leaves are enormous. And I think kale in the garden, especially throughout a mixed border is so stunning. The structure of it is just, it adds something a little bit different. The, especially with curly kale, curly purple kale, the leaves almost look like flowers. So I think that's a really nice addition. Here's one of my favorite zinnias right now, which is any of the, I think it's like the queen lime series of zinnias. We planted this from seed. I think this one is queen lime blush, which it'll have anything from totally green flowers, which are gorgeous, to the soft green with this little blush of pink around the crown. And there's something that looks it almost looks antique, like it's dusty or something, but I think it's such a pretty flower and I really like that in the cottage border. I think it looks pretty magical, but I love the lamb's ear. It's beautiful. It's got a similar foliage to the hostas, but it loves sunshine. So that's a nice option there. You probably can hear some of the acorns dropping from our oak trees. We have huge, <laughs> cosmos that have fallen down in all the rain and the wind but there you go these uh, verbenas you know they've all of our annuals have struggled so much because of the slugs and the rain and all that but you know these continue to bounce back i'm definitely doing these again so what i've learned is that play in the blue salvia 10 out of 10 this verbena this is i think the imperial blue verbena I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. I love the color, especially at this time of night. If you can kind of see, um, here, look at this. Isn't that color just, it, it, it sings out. That's the best way for me to describe it, that purpley blue color. It's so gorgeous and vibrant and deep and I love it. The butterflies love it. The bumblebees love it. The, what else? I mean, the hummingbirds come in, come to it and visit it. It's just moths, everything. I love this one. So that's, that's definitely one I'm gonna plant again. The Supertunia snowdrift, that's a Supertunia vista. So it has that larger habit and it creates that kind of beautiful mounded shape. Uh, but that's, again, just the slugs have been all over it, but because it's so aggressive in its growth, it's actually continuing to bloom, which is wonderful. Our eggplant here that you saw in the last tour, look at this beautiful eggplant. It actually might need a little bit longer too. And we haven't had too much of a problem with the eggplants and any insect damage because the skin is so tough. I think they're getting left alone. 
Our zinnias are starting to bloom, which is really nice. This is a really soft pink that I like. Some more of that queen lime blush. Really beautiful. And then here, I want you to come on this side so that you can see this um, Piketty Cosmo. So this is sort of similar to the one I showed you before, but this is really how most of them have looked on this plant. Do you see that? It's just because of this darker margin and then the darker center, they just look, they glow almost. It has such a pretty look in the garden. So I'm glad that we got some of those because I shared with you that a lot of our seeds this year were infested with aphids, sadly. Oh, look at this enormous grasshopper. Can you see him? He's right here. On our zinnia. I love the, oops, sorry. I love this seed. I just apologize to that grasshopper. <laughs> uh, I love the, the buds of zinnias. I think they look like little dragon's eggs. Do you think? <laughs> They're so, I just love the way they look. And then this zinnia here is really beautiful. This is the, I think it's called the violet something. Really beautiful. And then I have some other things through this border. But I wanted to show you these dahlias over here. So I wanted to show you this beautiful dahlia. This is called Cornell Bronze. And I absolutely love it. I planted a pom-pom dahlia similar to this uh, called Wizard of Oz a couple of years ago. And it wasn't, it just didn't really do much for me. But this, I just love, especially next to these hyssops when they're in their prime, that combination is so gorgeous. This whole bed I really wanted to be that kind of coral, peachy colors, like warm orange oranges and paired with blues and purples because I think those two colors in the garden go really, really well together. A lot of this is the same, but this um, sedum is enormous. And, oh, there's a little bee sleeping on it. <laughs> see him and see them see them bees uh, but these are this is just enormous it flopped over in the rain so I want to take you over this way and I'll show you some of the things we've done over here so here in this border we have um everything is doing really really well we've started to divide some perennials and I think this is a great time of year to do that so we've taken those geraniums that I'm obsessed with they're a white geranium scented leaf and divided them and placed them on either side of the border. And I think that's going to be kind of a, I can't help it. I just love that smell. <laughs> I think that's going to be a staple in this garden. It's just because, you know, sun, shade, they love it all. They can handle it, which is great for this area because it gets a lot of both. This is a white verbena, superbena of some kind, and I don't remember the name. Whiteout, actually, I think is the name, maybe. And those are phenomenal, fantastic. These soft pink sedums, more mounded, smaller growing habit. They just form these little, little mounds. Those have already gone over. And sadly, those blooms don't last very long. It's a really soft pink, really beautiful. All of our Nepita is doing so well. And then we have our fairy roses, which are doing phenomenally well. We have this little volunteer tomato. We had a volunteer potato in the cottage garden, which that used to be a driveway. So I don't really understand how that was in the new border. It got it, a potato grew from it. It was bizarre. <laughs> Everything else is doing really, really well. The peonies are starting to turn red, which is gorgeous. The penstemon, we've sort of changed our minds about. I think we might be dividing that and putting it in the front border just because I think it's a little tall for this spot. I kind of liked as the season was going on that this front part was a little bit softer, a little bit lower, a little bit more mounded. And this just started sticking out a little bit like a sore thumb. If you can say that about a plant, I mean, it's beautiful, so it's not really like a sore thumb. But in front of our front door, 
we were able to get these beautiful, these are, um, they have a funny name, Pinky Winky Hydrangea Standards. I don't, I think they're perfect. They're a perfect combination of structure, but also their lacy appearance really makes them feel whimsical and beautiful to me. So I really, really love them. And they have red twigs. They're, um, so it's sort of like a red twig dogwood. So hopefully that'll be some really nice winter interest as well. But they're, they start off this like soft, fluffy white, very ethereal white. And then they slowly blush, <laughs> starting at the base and then moving up. Really gorgeous. Our window boxes are incredible. The surefire white begonias and the coleus look stunning. I think that is definitely a repeat. The other ones look terrible. <laughs> They look so bad, I don't even want to show them. I will, just so you can see. But they're horrible, basically non-existent. They look terrible. But look at this side. The surefire whites are incredible. That whole arrangement is just beautiful. I probably wouldn't do the dichondra because they just get lost. They don't have the vigor of the others. I think especially with the color of the window boxes and the, the trim is, is so pretty and nice, and I love it. Our Brunera successfully spread itself which is really nice and, and really fun and here we have another big beautiful addition for me this is such a big deal and such a fun thing um, we have a beautiful stone bird bath and there are even some feathers in here because the robin comes and takes her bath here, which is really charming. I have a few little rocks from the property that I've placed in here so that she has a place to sit and lounge when she's bathing. Well, I think that's probably all that we'll be able to see <laughs> tonight. But I'm really grateful that you joined me for this little catch up and garden tour. I hope that you enjoyed it. But we've been eating from the vegetable patch every single day. We've gotten so much produce and I'm really, really grateful. So I'm grateful for you too, for being here. And thanks for letting me share my passion for gardening with you and get to hang out with you in the garden. It's really, really nice for me. I find it really relaxing. <laughs> All right. I hope you have a really good day, night, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Good night. <laughs>